Hello friends, today we are going to discuss the historical developments of communication research. This lecture is part of your paper, Communications Research. Start by looking at the early history of communications research. Then we will discuss trends that encapsulate the mainstream view of history of communications research. This would be followed by some observations about this view of the history of the mainstream view of the history of communications research. We will then examine the history of communications research in the Asian context followed by a discussion on the developments in the history of communications research in India. The mass media as we know it came into being about five and a half centuries ago with the invention of the printing press in the middle of the 15th century that is in the 1440s. The earliest printed newspaper began to be circulated from the 17th century onwards. Whereas the first screening of a film took place in the 19th century that is in 1895. In the 20th century, radio broadcasting became popular in the 1920s and television broadcasting caught on in the 1940s. And lastly, internet arrived in the last decade of the 20th century. However, despite the presence of print media since the 15th century, the low rate of literacy meant that they were limited to elites who could read. So it was only in the 20th century that the media began to reach out to the mass audience. In other words, mass audiences were created only after the arrival of media such as film, radio and television that did not require literacy. From the very early years, the mass media have elicited strong responses, both appreciative and critical from a variety of sources. Audiences have been appreciative, thronging into cinema houses, buying newspapers, radios and televisions, thereby delighting corporations that manufactured and distributed hardware and softwares. Existing elites expressed dismay at this new source of power. Governments sought to seize power over these media or at least regulate them. The early history of communications research is reported to have begun at a time when there was much ado about the ill effects of media consumption. As Fortner notes in 2014, the need to understand the real impacts of media on the consciousness and the choices of the non-elites became crucial to political and social stability. One example of these early researchers' studies are the Payne Fund studies, which were commissioned in the 1920s and 1930s to examine the effects of films on younger audiences in the USA. These studies are counted among the milestones of communication research by well-established communications theorists such as Lowry and D. Flo. According to Fortner, they fed the belief that films did not have, did have a cumulative and negative effect on children. We will now discuss the four trends in the historical development of communication research as offered by authors Barron and Davis in their popular textbook Mass Communication Theory in 2014. They note that while these trends follow each other like eras, there are times when trends coexist and impart, impact each other. The four main trends identified by Barron and Davis are one, mass society theory, second, limited effects trend, 
third the critical cultural trend and fourth the meaning making trend we will now examine them one by one so the first one mass society theory mass society theory offered an early explanation for the role played by media in the people's lives it was popular in the 19th and 20th centuries when mass media first began to attract large audiences industrialization and migration to urban areas in the USA and Europe had begun to cause changes in the social structure the existing elites including the church and the other cultural authorities feared that the individuals were becoming atomized that is they were becoming free from the cultural and social ties that had bound them and guided their behavior in the past and that this atomization would cause a breakdown in the social order and will result in chaos mass media especially came in for criticism because elites felt that the atomized individuals were turning towards mass media for a sense of belonging existing elites feared that the owners of the media corporations were becoming the new power centers who could control the thinking of millions now to us in the 21st century this might seem unduly fearful right but we need to remember that these were the early days of media when they were recording recorded instances of film audiences fleeing the theaters to save themselves from the oncoming train on the screen this was the time of american media entrepreneurs like william randolph hearst who is reported to have confidently asserted to his illustrator you supply the pictures i'll supply the war and orson welles famous radio broadcast invasion from mars which caused large number of people in the northeastern parts of usa to panic and to attempt to save themselves from what they thought was an attack by martians mass society theory holds that the mass media have a direct and a powerful effects on audiences it is therefore known as the magic bullet model or the hypodermic needle model it posited the rise of dictators who could use the media to control audiences hence it is also described as the propaganda model now these anxieties might again seem overstated to us but we must bear in mind mass society thinking paved the way for the founding of many government broadcasting agencies as well as government regulation of media content including censorship theodor adorno of the frankfurt school is considered to be the leading theorist of this tradition now towards the 1930s and 1940s this concern about the role of media attracted academic researchers from various social scientific disciplines and more importantly funding agencies interested in supporting communications research the result of this work is what has come to be known as the limited effects model of media effects which we will explore in the next section limited effects the limited effects tradition is attributed to the work of among others four founding fathers that is first paul lazarfield harold laswell kurt lewin and fourth karl hovland as we saw in the previous section mass society theory held that the mass media had a direct and powerful impact impact on audiences this new source of social and political power attracted the attention of many including radio broadcasters and advertisers as well as funding agencies and academic researchers from various disciplines
We've already seen how the Pain Fund supported research into the effect of films on adolescents. Paul Lazarfels, a Jewish Austrian sociologist who migrated to USA in the years before World War II, was initially supported by a grant from Rockefeller Foundation. He was among the early academic researchers to have brought quantitative methodological rigor to the study of media effects on audiences. Along with his team, which included his wife, the researcher Herta Herzog, Lazarfeld led Columbia University's Bureau of Applied Social Research, which was supported by corporate and government funding. They conducted a number of studies, including audience surveys and studies of media influence on voters' decisions. The findings of these studies, among others, showed that the audiences were influenced by a wide variety of sources of information, of which media was only one. The discovery of the importance of opinion leaders led to the formulation of two-step flow model. In two-step flow model, which information was deemed to first flow to, from media to opinion leader and then in second step flow from these leaders to others. Barron and Davis in 2014 note that the limited effects trend had caused some researchers such as Bernard Barrelson to declare that communications research as a field was dead. Now, we move on to the next approach known as critical cultural approaches. Now, in a break from the mass society theory and the limited effects paradigm, British scholars took a neo-Marxist approach to communication research. They argued that mass media was controlled by elites and carried content that was in line with elitist economic interests. They studied subgroups of audiences using this critical cultural theory and found that the audiences resisted the media discourse in many ways. This view of what the audience did with the media as opposed to what the media did to the audience was a new perspective on audiences. It paved the way for audiences to be theorized as an active rather than a passive entities. The next trend we are going to discuss is the meaning making process. Now meaning making approach, as we discussed, the conceptualization of an active audience gave a new perspective to communications research. However, Approaching audience as an active rather than a passive recipient of the media opened a variety of new research avenues, breathing new life into the field. The meaning-making trend takes a moderate effects perspective, which examines how audience use communications intentionally and the effects that this use has. Now, a young field of research. So what conclusion can we draw after discussing these trends of communication research? First, we observe that the communication research is a young field compared to other social science disciplines such as sociology, psychology, economics, political science and others. This is largely because the phenomena that we, are, we seek to study, that is mass communication, is more recent compared to what the other disciplines focus on. Second, communication research is an interdisciplinary area, which is a tradition of contributions from other social sciences, disciplines including sociology, political science and psychology, which continue to this day. Wilbur Schrumpert said, it is one of the busiest crossroads in the study of human behavior. 
which is understandable because communication is perhaps the fundamental social process. Without communication, human groups and societies would not exist. One can hardly make theory or design research in any field of human behavior without making some assumption about human behavior. And third, the mainstream narrative of history of mass communication research is almost entirely the history of quantitative American mass communication research and theory development, barring British contributions to the critical and cultural studies tradition. This narrative has been severely criticized. For instance, Poulet in 2006 observed that the powerful to limited effects storyline remained textbook boilerplate and literature review dogma. Fourth, communications historians have also noted how some allied research such as film studies are not viewed by their adherents. Fourth, Communications historians have also noted how some allied research such as film studies are not viewed by their adherents or by communication researchers as being part of the same field. Revisionist historians of communications research such as Simonson and Peters trace the development of communication research in other parts of the world including Europe. They observed that the department's training doctoral candidates such as the University of Leipzig had been set up in Germany in as early as 1916. This, they argued, are not part of mainstream narrative of mass communication history presented from an American point of view. In recent years, we see a rising interest in communication history in settings outside the USA and Western Europe. Now let us take a look at these developments. A recent study of Asian communications research published in the top tier international communication journal found an increase in these articles in the last two decades between 1990 and 2010, especially articles from China, Japan, and South Korea. These decades have seen a great increase in Chinese mass communication research with over 900 media education institutes, 14 doctoral programs, and 52 journals. Now let us take a look at the communication research in India. As we all know, India has a rich history and communications in diverse languages and media. Print media, films, radio and other types of music have been present in India for many decades now. Television, though a later entrant, is well established and the 21st century has seen the rise of digital media. This abundant presence of communication media has received the attention of communication researchers in India from a different perspective. Now, India has a large number of students seeking undergraduate graduation in communications because of a booming media industry eager to employ them. However, postgraduate and doctoral programs in communication that offer rigorous theoretical and methodological training are very rare. Thomas in 2015 observed a history of collaboration with US university programs as well as initiatives driven by American funding agencies such as Ford Foundation and foreign policy interests such as satellite instructional television experiments in 1975-76. Various Indian researchers have been publishing work rooted in Indian context. For instance, Pana Shah completed a dissertation on Indian film in as early as 1950s and in Mumbai universities, which was published as a book 30 years later in 1981. 
economist Omen and Joseph published a book on the economics of Indian cinema in 1981. While Indian researchers frequently pre present their work at national and international conferences, barring some informal networks, a national association of Indian researchers with a strong culture of peer-reviewed publication is still in development. Let us now summarize what we have discussed in this module. We familiarized ourselves with the prevalent discourse in mass communication history such as Fort Trent's narrative. We observed how the history of this young field shows its interdisciplinary nature with contributions from other disciplines of social sciences. We also noted how recent research has been openly critical of the trends narrative. We also found that newer histories are emphasizing the importance of funding organizations and governments with their foreign policy objectives as also playing a key role in the history of communications research. We discussed how some areas such as film studies are not viewed by their adherents or by communication researchers as being part of the same field. It is of great value and importance for us to be aware of these developments, mainly because American and British mass communication research form the dominant research paradigms or research frameworks of our time. Familiarity with these developments allows us to participate in and gain from conversations amongst researchers on the international stage. It is important to note that even the criticism of the dominant narrative comes from American scholars. The mainstream narrative and its critiques also provide us with the valuable comparative context as well as a motivation to document and theorize the history of communication research in India. This, my friends, is a crucial project for communication researchers interested in India. The many unique features of Indian audiences. First, India's diverse political, economical and social context and institutions. Second, the great variety of communications content that is created and consumed in India provide many rich avenues for communications research and theory building. We hope that this lecture would have helped you in understanding the historical development in communication research. We advise you to go through the text and as well as attempt the questions given in the other sections. Thank you.